Have you tried several diets and still struggled to lose weight? Well, I have good news for you. It's not you, it's the diet. This is because diets don't work. I'm Holly of Renewal Fitness and Nutrition Coaching. I'm a registered dietitian and personal trainer, and I help women to lose weight and restore gut health in natural and holistic ways. In this video, I'm gonna to explain to you why diets don't work and what does work instead, so you can stop feeling so bad about these weight loss efforts and finally reach your goals. Diets often require a drastic cut in calories and or entire food groups. So when a diet cuts out something like almost all carbs, like the keto diet, or almost all fat, like the low fat diet, these are a little bit of a red flag that you should watch out for. Our bodies need all three macronutrient groups to optimally perform and for us to feel our best. So you need carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Yes, there are certain instances where certain medical conditions may require that you adapt and change those macronutrients a bit, and you may need to go on one of these types of diets, but for the majority of people, these are not going to be the most sustainable, and that's what is key. Most fad diets aren't actually healthy. They can lead to low energy, a bad mood, feeling grumpy, feeling sluggish, vitamin and mineral deficiencies, or a reduction in things like antioxidants and polyphenols and fiber and all these other good things that we get from food. They can even cause muscle loss if you're not careful. And a lot of diets, actually, the reason why they work so quickly for some people and people feel great about them is because you're losing water weight and you're losing muscle fairly quickly. But when you step on the scale, you see the number going down, so it makes you feel good. But keep in mind that just because you're losing weight, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're losing fat. Diets don't take into account your personal needs and your personal health situation. So one type of way of eating is not going to work for everyone. For instance, someone who is obese and has a lot of weight to lose, who also has diabetes or may be another autoimmune condition, they need to eat different foods than someone who is a endurance runner who's maybe 10 or 20 pounds overweight and wants to lose weight, but also wants to perform well and also wants to maintain muscle. There's also considerations like, is someone's liver damage? Is someone having kidney issues? Does someone have gut issues? All of these people are going to need to eat different types of foods and have different dietary habits. Everyone has different goals and different health needs that are gonna determine what they should eat. So nutrition should always be very personalized, not this big cookie cutter umbrella that everyone thinks that they should fit under. Another big, big reason why diets don't work is because when we reduce calories and we make certain foods off limit, the way our brains work and our psychology works is that then we are automatically going to want it more. I'm sure you've noticed this if you've ever gone on a diet or you're going to be thinking more about food. You're going to be thinking about the foods that you can't have. You're going to want them more and then your cravings are going to increase. Your feelings of deprivation and almost maybe even a sadness around food will probably increase. And what this does is the longer you restrict yourself from being able to have certain foods or drastically cutting calories, eventually you're going to burn out on that. And what that leads to for a lot of people is binging. Over time, you start to go back to whatever you were doing before because you got so sick of eating in this very restricted way. You feel you can't do it forever. And then you probably start to regain weight. And this is the problem with diets. The fifth and last reason why diets don't work is that it tends to lead to this very unhealthy relationship with food and this guilt-based kind of mentality where there's good and there's bad, and if you eat this way, you're good, and if you eat this way, you're bad, and we can't trust ourselves with food, and then we feel like we have this unhealthy kind of battle with food, and this again is why it doesn't work long term. We shouldn't be battling with food. We should be enjoying food and using it as fuel to help us to feel good. Now, let's talk about what does work instead of dieting. What we want to shoot for when it comes to food and our relationship with food 
even when we're trying to lose weight, is sustainable lifestyle changes. We want to learn to eat in a way that's referred to as intuitive. So we're kind of training our body to learn what we need, how much we need, and what to give it, and to listen to the internal cues that our body gives us. So that's the second thing that works, is listening to your body cues. It's really important that you start to tune into your body and learn what does hunger feel like for you? What does thirst feel like for you? Are you even aware if you're thirsty? Because sometimes thirst feels like hunger. What does satiety feel like for you? So how do you know when you're full and satisfied and you don't need any more food? I could go on and on about this topic because this one is a pretty big one to learn, but it's referred to as intuitive eating. This is one of the principles of it. And I actually just recently talked about this with my women's monthly group coaching program. So if that's something you'd like to learn more about and kind of be in a community of women who are going through some of these same struggles, I would love to have you join us. I will put the link down below and whenever you join, you can have access to past recordings of the, our calls, our group calls, as well as the resources and the handouts that I provide. So you'll be able to get access to all that information about intuitive eating and a little bit more in-depth information on the topic of listening to your body's cues. A third tip is to eat regularly to keep your metabolism up and to pre prevent you from getting so hungry that you go overboard with your food. So letting yourself get too hungry is a really big problem for a lot of people. This is what leads to intense cravings and eating usually junkier food or just whatever you can find. So if you eat on a more regular schedule, which for a lot of people is probably around three or every three or four hours, that will help prevent those intense hunger pains and cravings, which will eventually help to prevent overeating. Along these lines, another tip is to eat a good hearty breakfast and a good hearty lunch and maybe you need some snacks in there too so that by the time you get home from work or it's the end of a busy crazy day with kids you haven't gone hungry all day so feed yourself give it the energy that it needs and then you will probably find it's much easier to eat in moderation in the evening as well as avoid any kind of late night snacking and kind of dealing with the day's stress and emotions via food because you've been hungry and deprived all day long Another tip that works is actually really enjoying and savoring your food. And try to eat slowly, take your time, and let it register. Think about the textures and the flavors and what you're enjoying about it. Eat slowly. If you're going to eat it, then really enjoy it. You'll probably eat less of it. You'll probably be less prone to keep going and binging on that food. Along those same lines is try not to make any food completely off limits. This goes back to why diets don't work is when you feel restricted, then you want to eat it. So if you allow yourself the freedom to have a food, if you really want it, it's such freedom for your mind and it will help you to avoid these sort of restrict and then binge patterns. You want to aim to eat healthy in a way that's going to nourish and support your body. But if you have the freedom that if you really want a burger and fries or you really want some ice cream, then you can have it. Usually this is going to help you to, again, not eat so much because it's not sort of this like last supper mentality, like, oh, I shouldn't be having this and I might not be able to have it again anytime soon. As long as it's there and available, then it tends to kind of calm down our anxiety around food. We have the freedom to just enjoy food when we want it. And then we can go right back to our healthy eating Another tip is to listen to your gut. And I don't necessarily mean gut feelings. I actually mean listen to your gut. For most of us, there's going to be foods that lead to bloating or gas or just a really full, uncomfortable feeling. But try to pay attention to what foods you really feel good after you eat, like your stomach feels good, your whole body feels good and what doesn't seem to sit well with you. And then what's helpful before you eat is to think, okay, how is this food gonna make me feel? If you can sort of imagine that and think about it beforehand, then it can be very helpful in making better choices. And along those same lines, really focus on what is going to improve your health and be the best for you. What makes you feel light and focused and energetic and just makes you feel really good. Try to eat more of those foods and also to think about what foods are gonna benefit 
your brain, your heart, your gut, your muscles. Usually these are things like whole natural God made foods. And these foods too are going to become packaged with natural vitamins and minerals and antioxidants and all these different phytochemicals that help to fight off disease and support brain health and improve our mood. So the more you can focus on supporting your body and giving it the fuel that it needs, the better you'll feel and the more you will sort of tend to lean more towards eating those really beneficial foods and less towards the foods that do really nothing for your body and can even harm your health. In fact, another benefit is that these foods tend to make you feel full longer so you're less likely to overeat and your body processes them much better. Your body is not designed to process chemical-laden, man-made foods. It doesn't really know what to do with those, and so that can set off this whole array of problems in the body. A last tip for you is to use wisdom when it comes to food. So while we don't want to live in this diet restrictive type of mentality, sometimes we do need to use discipline with food. In the Bible, and in actually most religions, there are practices of fasting. And fasting, whether it's one meal or a certain type of food or days on end, is a spiritual practice. It is an opportunity for us to grow personally. It's an opportunity for us to learn how to deny ourselves for a greater good. There are times where we do need to say no to certain foods or maybe even do something like a fast because it is going to grow us personally and benefit us spiritually and it may be something that is going to be far better for our health. So in general, yes, you want to have freedom with food, but use that intuition and your spiritual wisdom to think about food and pay attention to if there's times where you feel like, you know what, I think I just do need to maybe remove this food for a time or just say no for it for today. A lot of us have difficulty with discipline and sometimes we do need to practice that so we have that spiritual and mental muscle of being able to say no to things because that's an important lesson in all of life to be able to use discipline to say yes or no to things at just the right time i also strongly suggest that if you have a relationship with god ask him to help you prayer is such a key component of weight loss and figuring out what works for you ask god to give you insights as to what does your body need I have had multiple clients say, yeah, I felt like God told me I needed to eat more of this or I needed to give this to my body. And then they started feeling better and they figured out why that was. God is amazing and that he will actually speak to us, not necessarily audibly, but just in a kind of intuition, gut feeling, still small voice kind of way. If you ask him, he may just lead you or bring someone into your life or give you a video that is going to Give some little insight as to what you might be needing. Also, just ask him for help. This whole weight loss journey is a struggle. I know I've been there. So ask him to guide you, to help you, to give you the strength, to give you the discipline, to resist temptations, and to do what is best for your body, your health, and what you can do to honor him. And I would love to invite you to do a couple of things. I have a few different options for you. One, you can go on my website, renewalfitcoach.com, and I will put the description down below with the specific links. I have a free anti-inflammatory flexible meal plan that you can get on there. That's a really easy free way to get some recipes and meal ideas that are really good and beneficial to your body. So you can get that on my website. On that same page, you can also purchase a meal plan if you want something that is a four week or a six week plan. I just uploaded a brand new one. It's a Mediterranean style of eating. So you can get that on my website. It comes with recipe cards. It comes with shopping lists, everything you need to eat in a healthy way. Also, if you could use more individual support, I do private one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching and would love to help you figure out what works for you and provide that accountability, support, and encouragement. I also have a monthly group health coaching program for women. We meet once a month on a call, and then there's a private Discord group as well that you can join where you can chat, share ideas, talk with the other women. So all of those links I will put down below. I would love to have you join group coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, or grab one of those meal plans off of my website. So I hope this video is helpful for you. If it was, please give it a like, 
subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And until the next video, blessings on your health and fitness journey.